So hello YouTubers, uh, for those that have been following this bulb for a while, you guys must know that yes, we are doing another modification. For those that haven't, uh, so far there has been three videos on this bulb. The first one looking at the bulb itself with the comparison between uh, rechargeable and alkaline batteries, which I will link below as video one. Uh, a secondary video where I modified this bulb to work off of either uh, AAA batteries like it has in there, or for a longer term uh, use, it can also work off of any USB power source uh, too. But the issue is, is that you can't have the batteries and the USB uh, plugged in at the same time because uh, the batteries will either try and power the USB port, which is no good, or the uh, USB will try and charge the batteries, which is also no good. So one part of the modification today is we are going to make this bulb able to uh, use either USB or battery power uh, independently, but at the same time, meaning that we can have the batteries and the USB plugged in and just switch back and forth between uh, which one we wanna use and not have them being able to backflow into each other. The other thing with this video is I'm going to attempt to make a uh, slow fade effect with this light when I turn it on and off. So that way, instead of it being uh, instantaneous, like you can see right now, it just instantly turns on and off, maybe having a little bit of a build up and drop off. And per a suggestion of another viewer, I'm going to swap the cool white LED in here, which is oftentimes considered very harsh, to a warm white LED, give it more of a like natural bulb look, and we'll see how that turns out. So first things first. Um, so you might ask, how exactly do I propose to uh, make it where the light can be powered by USB and battery at the same time, yet also act independently of each other. And that's quite simple. What I'm going to be using is a toggle switch. Now, uh, basically, uh, this will be close to the circuit that we are using uh, in the actual bulb, which is we have a USB power input, excuse me, we have a USB power input with its own resistor, except for this is actually on the ground. So it's a, it's it's the same circuit per se, but uh, with the components in a slightly different order. So we got a USB uh, going through a, a resistor just to drop the voltage a little bit because this is uh, the built-in resistor for the light was made for a 4.5 volt source, not a five volt source. So by adding that extra resistor in there, we're just taking a precautionary measure. But uh, the toggle switch has connections between pin one and two or two and three at any given time. Meaning that if I have the switch on this side, these two pins are making contact. And if I have the switch on this side, these two pins are making contact. So it's actually quite simple. We have the center pin be the output going to the light and to the ground, which means that when the switch is in this position, it lets USB uh, power flow through there, through the center pin, through the light and down to ground. Yet if we switch it to this side, it lets the battery power flow through into the center pin and out through ground, meaning that we do not have, it's impossible for both of these circuits, or excuse me, both the power sources to power the light at the same time or to back power each other. I can show this as part of a demonstration with this little prototype circuit that I built here. And this is using the same concept. So if I turn this on, you'll notice that one of these LEDs, and I'm glowing, and this LED glows. This LED is representative of our actual LED, whereas this LED is representative of a power source. So let's say that this is battery powered and this is USB power. I have this toggle switch set up in the same exact manner as what I showed in the schematic. If I now flip this toggle switch to the other side, you can see we switch power sources. Now we're powering off the, I believe I said that was USB power. Back to battery, back to USB, back to battery. This light always stays continually lit because once again, we are drawing from a different power source. These are representative of our different power sources. But yeah, you can see, works pretty well. So this is the basic concept of the circuit that we are going to stick inside of the bulb and once again, um, 
that is uh, essentially this. Pretty simple. All right, let's actually get to the modifications then. I'm not going to go over in too much detail the actual components of this circuit because I, I've already uh, discussed that quite in depth in the other two videos. So um, basic, simple pull, click, switch. Um, power runs typically uh, in series from the battery pack to the switch through a resistor, through the LED, and then back to the negative of the uh, battery pack, whereas I end up putting a USB uh, in here along with the resistor um, to allow for the different uh, power paths. Now what we need to do is we need to have this wire, we got to separate these wires here and this one has to be our, our output. We have to have a wire soldered. Okay. Basically what we gotta do is we gotta take the positive from the battery and the positive from the USB and solder it to pin one and pin three of the toggle switch. Which uh, with this thing I can represent it as this and this. Whereas pin uh, two is the output just like it is here. So that way when we have it uh, flipped to either one of these, it allows current to flow. This on off switch is representative of this click switch here. Uh, the resistor is the resistor that the uh, LED, uh, what, what goes through the LED, this is the resistor right here and the LED. And then the battery negative, uh, which is right here, and then for the USB, it actually goes through an additional resistor. So this is actually representative, realistically, of what the circuit looks like. So I'm going to start up my soldering iron here, and I'm going to need some additional wire too, which I should have around here. I actually got a soldering station now, so that's nice. With that, for right now, I am simply going to desolder this joint, actually flow some fresh solder on there. There we go. And like I said, this will be our new center output for our toggle switch. And uh, th this will be one of the pins along with, I need to solder a new wire to here and uh, have that connected to the other side. The thing about this is that I was hoping to make a slit in the case on this side somewhere where I could stick the toggle switch, but it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to do it on this side. So I'm actually probably gonna have to do it on this side, uh, stick it over here uh, by making a little cutout. And then uh, working from there, I might actually have to extend the, uh, the length of these wires a bit in order to do that. So yeah. All right, well, to make the cutout for the switch, uh, the easiest way I figure to do it will be to melt uh, a little slit in there on the outside. And I hope it doesn't uh, obstruct anything, which if I put it maybe down here, I think will be pretty okay. Because I don't see anything uh, sticking up there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this uh, torch here, which you probably can't see the flame. I'm going to use it to heat up this X-Acto knife. I'm going to use that to cut a little tiny slit in here. And hopefully it will be the right size for uh, for our switch, so. 
Definitely not the cleanest. But then again, one of my projects ever. Mmm. I'm sure you guys really like that, me cutting toward myself. Don't worry, I probably won't cut myself by accident. Maybe. Mmm, it seems like it's working, but maybe I'm gonna expand it just a bit more just to case. When I fasten it, it's gonna be kind of one of those situations where uh, not the easiest to, to kind of back out and uh, start back over again, so better to give a little extra room than too little. Alright, that is good. I'm going to clean up the hole a little bit, and then I am going to try and figure out a weight that's going to be best to fasten that. See? Just as good as if the factory would have done it. That was a joke for those of you who might be humor challenged. Um, <clears throat> uh, considering this does have screw holes, so I could potentially fasten screws uh, from the outside in. But typically you use this type of thing with uh, with... Uh, machine screws and then nuts on the end of them, which I don't have any of those. I could always just try and simply hot glue it, but I don't think that that would hold up to the pressure very well. So what I was thinking is, I do have some one minute epoxy. I could put a couple of little dabs, you know, on there and then just hold it for one minute. And I think that might be the strongest option. So I'm gonna take uh, the area where I'm gonna put the epoxy and I'm gonna score up the plastic a little bit just to give the uh, epoxy something to, uh, to grip onto. Otherwise it'll probably just come right up. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna take a couple of minutes to score this stuff up and then I am going to get the epoxy out and we're gonna try that. All right, I got my one minute epoxy uh, and I got a little scrap of uh, plastic from my trash because as we all know, the best form of recycling tends to be reusing. And uh, I don't need a whole lot. I just need a little tiny dab, but I want to make sure I have enough that I can mix it, so. Ooh, that is way too much. I did not mean to put that much there. I gotta work quick with this stuff, because you know, the whole one minute set time and all. So, quickly mix it up. Stuff smells like cat urine. That's what I always think when I, when I smell epoxy. I wonder if it releases some type of ammonia-based compound when it cures. I should look into that. Definitely smells like it. It has kind of a vinegary smell too. I don't think it uses acetic acid to cure. I take in the areas that I scored and I just apply some of that epoxy in there. Get at least a good drop. I can't put too much because I don't want it squeezing into the switch itself because that would uh, kind of defeat the point of all this. Now, take the switch and drop it in place. And I can see I, I did get stuff in the switch. Okay, new switch, quickly. This is harder than I originally would have expected. Why do I ever expect anything to be easy? That's the real mystery in all this. Oh yeah, look at that. Already gel. Completely useless. I might have gotten this one on in time though. What I think I'll actually do is I'll mix up a slight more epoxy and put it on the top here to uh, to just make sure that it's really held down. I would say that um, that is in there pretty good. So, um, yeah, I am going to let that cure. All right, so uh, while that is curing, uh, I need to make some wires uh, adjustments off of here to get both a wire off on here that I can connect to one of these and um, a longer wire for this and make this wire longer. So I'm actually just gonna desolder this wire all together.
Now, 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 now